and developing stars. However, Act One was a show stolen by the game's leading man, Barry Bonds. Buddy Bell has seen the curtain rise and fall numerous times, and his cast played to critical acclaim in the season's opening series. Tonight, the Rockies Roadshow looks to steal the scene in L.A. After three games in the nation's midsection, the Rockies have made their way west to Tinseltown, downtown Los Angeles, Chavez Ravine to be exact, as the Dodgers celebrate their 40th anniversary of playing at Dodger Stadium. The Rockies, after a nice opening series in St. Louis, take on a Dodger team still looking for win number one on the 2002 campaign. And good evening, everyone. Along with George Frazier, I'm Drew Goodman. The Rockies lost the opener 10-2, and then they got great pitching from Denny Nagel and John Thompson. Well, the great pitching side of it, they threw strikes. They didn't walk anybody. I think that's the key to their success, to, really the key to any starting staff. And uh, Nagel was good, only one walk in six innings. Thompson, no walks, seven hits in the ball game. He dominated a very, very good Cardinal team, Drew. And I think that's something that Chacon should learn from and carry over here to Dodger Stadium. Yeah, John Thompson, those seven hits, George, all singles against, as you mentioned, a very good St. Louis lineup. Tonight, Sean Chacon takes the baseball, and Sean Chacon needs to throw strike one. He's aware of that. For me, it's, it's very important. Um, I'm not, you know, a control guy. I'm more of a power pitcher. I, I rely on, on the movement of my fastball and, and the breaking ball. So me getting ahead, it's, it's real important because it allows me not to focus too much on, on uh, you know, hitting the spot rather than just letting my fastball work for me. I'm really excited to see Chacon throw. He showed glimpses last year of a guy who could be a dominant pitcher. He'll dominate the National League. But like most power pitchers, Drew, I think he's a guy who's got to get strike one because he is either around or out of the strike zone with his second and third pitches with the curveball out of the zone, cutter sailing out of the zone. Much like Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling, they get strike one and you don't see any more strikes, but you have a comfortable over four and end up with a shutout at the end of the night. And I think for Chacon, he's got to dominate with the fastball, strike one, and then use the curveball to get out of the innings. Yeah, he's got that big 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock hook when it is on. And it's buckle your knee. Sean Chacon makes his third career start at Dodger Stadium. He'll be opposed tonight by a former Rocky, Andy Ashby. Come on back to L.A. with us. On display tonight, two of the top right fielders in the business. Larry Walker, of course, who led the National League in hitting at 350 last year. And Sean Green, who blasted a Dodger record 49 home runs last year. Well, two of the premier baseball players in America today, Drew, and the reason why, they drive in runs. I mean, that's what they're paid to do. Not only that, great defensive outfielders to go along with it. I think those are the two keys. You look at them, all-around players. They've got good speed on the base pass. You don't see a lot of stolen bases. First to third, they may be two of the best. And without Gary Sheffield in the lineup, even more pressure to drive in runs on Sean Green. It is with Sean Green and Brian George. They're coming over in a trade for Sheffield, but it all falls on the shoulders of Green, a hometown boy. Signed a big contract, and it paid dividends last year. All right, and the Dodgers last year won 86 games. The Rockies getting set to take Take on Los Angeles from Dodger Stadium. Todd Helton, you know he's always ready to go. Baseball's up next. And by your Rocky Mountain Harley Davidson dealer, the future is not what it used to be. Beautiful night as it generally is in Southern California and typical of Southern California. Everybody's caught on I-10 trying to get to Dodger Stadium. Late arriving crowd, Buddy Bell and the Rockies. Three more here in Los Angeles and then home for a 10-game homestand. And the lineup tonight for Buddy Bell. He'll lead it off with... Juan Pierre, of course. Uribe went deep yesterday. Larry Walker had a home run in the St. Louis series. Batting cleanup will be Todd Helton looking for his first HR. Todd Zio returns to Los Angeles. He'll play third and bat fifth. Todd Hollinsworth, Rookie of the Year for L.A. a few years back, also returns. Jose Ortiz will be in the seven hole. Ben Petrick for the second straight ball game will be behind the plate. And Sean Chacon will be on the hill. 
And defensively, the Dodgers will align this way. Brian Jordan, who comes over from Atlanta, will be in left field. Dave Roberts is in center field, a young player. Sean Green in right. Beltre and his tourists on the left side of the infield. The veteran Mark Ruzulanic at second. Eric Caros at first. And Paula Duca, who had a tremendous season last year, will be behind the plate. And Andy Ashby, who in 93 was with the Rockies, went 0-4 in that first season and then was dealt in midseason to San Diego. And since then, George has been an all-star on a couple of occasions. Yes, he has been with San Diego and then signed as a free agent with Philadelphia. Good sinker, good slider, pretty good split finger. Seven and six lifetime against the Rockies. First start in almost a year for Ashby is this year here at Dodger Stadium. Started the year as a free agent last year, 2-0. and oh, Tore a flexor muscle and after surgery had the year off. And he's coming back. Has pitched pretty well in spring training. 21 and two-thirds innings in the spring. Great command of all three pitches. He doesn't walk many batters. No, he usually stays ahead in the count. And they were really pleased with his last outing this spring. It came last Saturday against Cleveland, George. Six strong innings in that ball game. Gave up just a run and five hits. Here's Juan Pierre, the numbers he did a year ago. And what was so impressive about that 327 average is it wasn't inflated by Coors Field. He had over 320 on the road as well. Well, he utilized his speed. A lot of balls on the ground. You know, you see guys come to the big leagues with speed and they end up thinking they're line drive hitter. Pierre has not done that. He's kept the ball on the ground, starting to learn to bunt with a little bit more effectiveness, not only going up the third baseline, but the first baseline. He's worked very hard on that. Ashby starts out with a fastball for a strike. And a breaking pitch is chopped foul. So Pierre's in the hole, nothing in two. Dodger Stadium has always been a very good pitcher's ballpark, and tonight's cool. Tonight's one of those nights, typical of St. Louis last night, where you don't want to get sawed off. No, you don't. You just try to keep the ball on the fat part of the plate. You're going to see a lot of 0-1, 0-2 counts out of Ashby. We talked about him, how well he commands all three pitches. Knows what he's doing on the mound and what an added plus this would be for the Dodgers, of course, with Dreyford on the DL. Brown struggled a little bit early. The loss of Chan Ho Park to free agency. Beltre cuts it off. They had him positioned well. You can see on that particular pitch, Laduga set up away, and the pitch was away. Great command of that sinking fastball. A lot of ground balls, and I think the Dodger defense pretty good on the infield now. Pistorius is supposed to have a lot of range at shortstop and turn the double play ball very well. Cora played there a little bit last year. Rebele, another one that can back up in the infield position. Boca Chica. There's his tourist, the young shortstop. Won the job from Alex Cora. Juan Uribe looked at strike one, and he gets under a breaking pitch. Laduca's going to come back to the screen. He won't have a play. Well, years ago, that's an out. Then, of course, with the new seating area here at Dodger Stadium, put in a couple of years ago to bring fans a little bit closer, has tightened up the home plate area. But, George, it is still one of the largest foul territories in all of baseball because if you look around first base and second and, and third base, to the dugouts, there's plenty of room. Plenty of room to go catch a, a ball. And, and really what this does, it's helpful to the pitchers. Obviously here at Dodger Stadium, a long history of great pitchers. Here's the 0-2. Utilize that part of the field. Well, the, the book out on your eBay, if you can get ahead of him 0-2, try to get him to swing at something out of the strike zone. Exactly what Ashby was trying to do. We'll see what kind of plate coverage he has. Again, Laduca signals with the pinky fastball away. Well, part of that is, Drew, I mean, if you look at the scouting report on your eBay, they say get ahead and then go with a breaking ball out of the zone. Now, they utilized that pretty good last year against him. And I think Ashby was such great control inside and outside of the plate, and he went with the fastball away. Now he's going to go with the sinker. Anytime you see the index finger, the circles form, they try to run that sinker in on the hands under the bat and get the ground ball out. Ashby's been around 2000 season. He was in Philadelphia and Atlanta. Of course, many years prior to that in San Diego. Best season in 98, won 17 ball games. The 2-2, Uribe, did he lay off? Yeah, he did. Well, there's some maturation right there in game four of the season. A year ago, he's probably heading back to the dugout. Yeah, he's swinging from his heels a year ago. I think that's a lot of work with Clint Hurdle and the thought process to hit big league pitching. Ashby tries to go above the hands, and it'll be 3-2 again. 
Ashby's 34 years old. He's been in the big leagues for a dozen years. Well, 3 2 curveball here. Must have a lot of confidence in the pitch. And then Kurtz up with a heater. His tour is deep in the hole, and he makes the long throw to Karos to retire Uribe. All right, talk about LaDuke. The job he's done with the bat has been phenomenal. Then all of a sudden he starts to catch pretty good. You see the shake of the head. He asks for the sinker down and away, then gives him the split finger. As he sets up, the body is very tight, relaxed hand. Yeah, Asturias, the shortstop. We'll take a look at the strong arm that he displays here. Uribe with above average speed. I feel like he can get to a lot more balls. It's going to save a lot of outs for this pitching staff. And though it would not appear so based on the opening series, they believe the strength of this team is the depth they have, not only in their starting rotation, but also in their bullpen. But they were outscored by the Giants 24 to 2. First time the Giants have swept a series at Dodger Stadium, as you look at the numbers on Walker, since 1982. Well, you got to think about some things that they did, Drew. I mean, you, not only that, they're 12 for 88, hit 138 as a team, and really not hitting the ball with any authority whatsoever. Dave Roberts glides back and puts away the third out, so a 1 2 3 start in Andy Ashby's return after a year layoff. There's a very affable Jim Tracy in his second year as the skipper of the L.A. Dodgers. He did such a nice job last year when they won 86 games. They extended his contract in 2003 and 2004. And he'll begin this way tonight. Dave Roberts will be in center field. His tourist, the 22-year-old shortstop, will bat second. Paul LaDuca, who was terrific last year, will bat in the three-hole. Sean Green will bat cleanup. Ryan Jordan comes over from Atlanta. He'll bat in the five-hole. Adrian Beltre, with great talent, will be at third base. Karras will bat seventh. Bruce Alanek eighth. And Andy Ashby will bat ninth. Defensively, the Rockies will align this way tonight. Left to right in the outfield. Hollinsworth here and Walker. Zeal, Uribe, Ortiz, and Helton in the infield. Ben Petrick is behind the dish. And Sean Chacon, he of the great curveball, is on the hill tonight. And stepping in, Dave Roberts. He shortens up. And there is strike one from Sean Chacon. Well, you take a look at that curveball, the cu the cutter and the changeup. Of course, the curveball his out pitch. One in a lifetime against the Dodgers. Command early. I think it's important for Chacon. He spoke about it in the open about how he needed to get ahead. Strike one. He got ahead. Strike one. Gets the ground ball out of Roberts. This mound is difficult to come into, Drew, and the reason why is the bullpen, even though it's 10-inch slope, it's a gradual slope up to the mound, so you don't get the same steepness. Now, this is visitor's bullpen. Steepness that you do on this mound. So when you come out, it's important. You can see he's standing behind the mound, and, of course, as he walks up on the mound, it's like walking up on Mount Everest. And then as you start to fall, you have a tendency, your foot, you're waiting on it to hit the dirt, hit the dirt, because the slope of the mound is so big that it's very difficult to stay back on the back leg long enough, allow the arm to get on top and catch up. And the tendency, fastball comes up in the strike zone. One of the things Sean Chacon has learned from Mike Hampton is really how to vary the speed of his fastball. And he gets a pop-up on the infield. And here's where the large room will pay off. A lot of times, that's on top of a dugout. But Todd Zeal, who knows this field well, scoots over and makes the put out and two quick outs for Sean Chacon. You see Zeal stay with the play over into that foul territory, just what you're talking about. Chases it over, knowing you've got a lot of room. And it's very helpful. helpful. And you got a catcher like Petrick run alongside you, telling you get plenty of room. You know how much. You just don't know when the wall is coming. One of the crowd favorites here in Los Angeles after the breakout year. Eight years in the minor league, Paul, minor leagues. Paul LaDuca finally gets an opportunity last year. He was to share the duties with Chad Kruder behind the plate. But as you see with those numbers, as the big curveball's in there for a strike, he took over the number one role very early on. This is a guy you root for. And the fastball hit right at Ortiz, who had him positioned perfectly up the middle. And a four-pitch, one, two, three inning for Sean Chacon. We'll go to the second. Helton Zeal and Hollinsworth do. Coming in 
And though it's only three games, guess who was out for early BP yeah, today? I can imagine. Todd Helton. I'm sure Juan Pierre was part of that. Oh, yeah. Juan Pierre was here at about 1230. <laughs> Comfortable six and a half hours before game time. Yeah, he used to come out early just to play gin rum here, play little cards in the locker room. Yeah, the Juan Pierre doesn't play no, cards. No, he doesn't play cards. No. It's all business. That's all it is. And it's all business for the most part for Todd Helton. They'll play straight away and deep. Sean Green's only about five strides from the warning track out in right field. You see it well on your screen. And Helton steps in. Andy Ashby to work. And right back up the middle, Ashby's going to have a chance. And he guns down Todd Helton. Helton hit it hard. Ashby knocked it down and recovered. Well, you've got to get in a fielding position, and Ashby really does that. Compact delivery ends up very balanced out over his front foot on the mound. And Helton right on the fastball, realizing good hitters realize strike one. Well, I'm going to attack the ball early, and Helton just trying to drive the ball back up the middle. You know, that's one of those testers after surgery, even though it's been a year, first time out on the mound, that you go to make a play like that and really make sure your feet are planted under you and make the perfect throw over to first base. And here's the former Dodger. And former Ranger and former Met and former Cardinal, <laughs> Todd Zeal. Now left out a few organizations. How about the Cubs as well? Fastball's over for Ashby at 91 miles an hour. Jim Tracy was saying something very interesting before the game about Andy Ashby and his return. He said, you know, the first few outings in the spring, that's just off the corner. He just wants to make sure he can throw without pain. He's not worried about breaking pitches. He's not worried about getting guys out. He's not worried about counts. He's not worried about situations. Now, once he has the confidence that the arm's okay, then you ascend from there. Uh, two things dictate that. One, long-term contract. He's not trying to earn a ball club. Number two, he's a veteran and knows that once he gets his body in shape, the pain's not there, the rest will fall into place. And that comes from having a lot of success at the big league level. 17 wins in 98 in San Diego with a teammate of Mr. Brown, and then 99 winning 14 ball games. Uh, signed as a free agent with Philadelphia. Things didn't work out. He was four and seven there in 2000. Traded to Atlanta late in the year, went eight and six, and then signed as a free agent here with the Dodgers. And mentioned earlier, started the year two and zero. Oh. Both those wins coming against the Diamondbacks. The three ones popped up. Caros is going to have a play, and he retires his former teammate. So Ashby has set down five in a row. Now coming right out of the glove to give you an indication. He's such a compact delivery. Able to get high up on that leg. Allows that arm to get up on top and drive the baseball. Boy, what a great shot here. The ball, look at the rotation. The ball spinning in on that right-hander. See Zeal open that front side up, Drew, trying to get the head out in a hurry before the ball gets in on the hands. You know this guy's geared up to play here. Todd Hollinsworth. And that pitch is beneath the knees. You know, former Rookie of the Year in a Dodger uniform, traded away. Battled injuries really after that rookie season. Battled one again last year. I hope everything stays healthy. Could be such a positive for this ball club if he can stay healthy for 162 ball games. And he's got a hitter's count right now, two and nothing against Ashby. Two outs, nobody on. Top of inning number two, no score from Dodger Stadium. Back on the right side, on the left side, I should say. 423 hitter since leaving the Dodgers when he takes on Los Angeles. You see, see that so much in sports. Even though guys will say you don't want to get up any more for one opponent than another, you do. It's subconscious. Well, anytime you get traded by a ball club, you always want to come back and haunt them in some way. And I think you know, I did that as I was traded throughout my career from National League. And you go against former teams, former managers that maybe you did uh, crossways with at some point in your career that you do get a little more excited to face that ball club. Hansworth will look at a 3-1. Big gap in right center field. And this ball will go down the left field line, also get into the seats. Well, Ashby, you're noticing so far, he never gets in the middle of the plate very often. Everything's either sinking away or coming in on a right-handers. 
With Ashby, I go back to a ball game in 1999 when he was in a San Diego uniform. 74 pitches, 54 strikes, and a shutout against the Rockies. That's the most impressive outing I've seen. That's efficient, 74 pitches. This one's hit hard down the right field line. Foul. That's where Hollinsworth had his lone RBI in that St. Louis series. He had a double down the right field line. And if you're looking at Todd Hollinsworth and you follow it in the papers, one thing he's working on is staying back. And so far in this at bat, he's done a very good job. He hasn't lunged once. Chopper, tough play. Beltre with the short hop and made it look pretty easy. Adrian Beltre has to come up with that short hop. Otherwise, it's going to be a hit for Hollinsworth. Another 1-2-3 inning for Ashby. Middle of two, no score. No score, no hits, nothing across for either team. Sean Green will step in and take a look at Sean Chacon. This date in history brought to you by Jeep. The Rockies played their first regular season game ever on April 5th, 1993 against the Mets at Shea Stadium. Doc Gooden threw a three-hit shutout. Green last year, 49 home runs. He drove in 125, hit 297. And he looks at a fastball at the knees for a strike. Going back to what you said a few moments ago, it looks like Sean Chacon has made that adjustment from the bullpen to the hill, the slope of the hill at Dodger Stadium. And one thing you talked about earlier, he's not trying to overthrow the baseball. You know, with Hampton talking about throw the batting practice fastball, the 85-mile-an-hour fastball, and Chacon can get it up to 92, 93 at times but has slowly starting to listen to people. You know, when you're a young pitcher, you can overpower people with stuff just about all the way through the minor leagues. You get to the big leagues, people figure you out pretty quick. So what you have to do is change things around and, and become a better pitcher, and he's doing that. And last year, Chacon, they say, well, an overall record, 6-10, and 10, not that great. Earned run average, 5.06, pretty good for pitching in Coors Field. More importantly, through six innings, 13 times out of those starts out of 27, Seven innings, eight times. A little high heat here, hard to catch up with. Just above the hands, looks very hittable, but at 93 with movement, difficult to hit. Good breaking pitch there. Sean Green just did lay off. So it's out full on Green, who's leading off the bottom of the second against Chacon. Seventh year of professional baseball now for Sean, as you look in on Ben Petrick. He got the fastball in the spot he wanted, and Green wasted it. Well, very compact delivery, and I think part of the deal with Chacon, more than anything, is the body language you send to the opposition. They were given in in any possible way. So many guys like to stay so relaxed on the mound. They show it walking off, going to the mound. Eager to get on it, eager to get off of it. Get that offense back up there again. So Green draws a walk, and we have the first base runner of the game. Brian Jordan will step in. The former Pro Bowl safety with the Atlanta Falcons. And shortly after that Pro Bowl season, he decided I'll play baseball full time. Well, he found out it's a little better to hit than get hit. Well, he did a lot of the striking when he was playing <laughs> safety. He was pretty good. Yeah, you got to think about it, though. They have that much talent. There's been very few of them. Of course, Bo Jackson, another that can able to go out and play the game, play two sports. Dion. And Dion Sanders, but to play it at their level. Yeah. You know, Dion was good, but he was not as good as these two guys. I'm just speaking of Bo Jackson and Brian Jordan to achieve what they've achieved at the big league level, plus start and play for a little while in the NFL. Pretty phenomenal. Yeah, that, they're freak shows. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> Sean Green will draw the attention of Sean Chacon. He was a 30-30 man a few years ago for Toronto, the first ever Blue Jay to be a 30-30 guy. Last year, he stole 20 bases. It's a long strider. And this is in the air on the right side of the diamond. Walker's coming in. And he'll tuck it away. 
Riders Edge novice riding classes are taking place at Rocky Mountain Harley Davidson now. I ought to sign up. Call 303-703-2885. That number again, 303-703-2885 to find out when the next available openings are. Novice riding classes well, at Rocky Mountain Harley Davidson. You gotta love great, it. It's a great idea because you know so many people want to own a Harley now and, and get out on the road and ride a little bit and enjoy the free spirit. Well, you go to one of these classes, figure out how to ride it, enjoy it, and then go buy you a Harley. There you go. Rocky Mountain Harley Davidson. Adrian Beltre looks at a pitch up high, one and nothing to Beltre. Last year, in the winter, prior to the start of the season, he had an appendectomy. He had it done in the Dominican Republic, and evidently it wasn't done properly. He had some... Oh, that goes on past Todd Helton up the right field line. Now Green's going to dig for third. He's going to get there. So two bases on the throwing error from Sean Chacon. So concerned about Green keeping him close. And the Aaron throw. And now Green's 90 feet away. Well, you can look at the big lead over here. The ball is scooped short hops, Helton out in front, and then Green realizing how big a space there is in foul territory takes advantage of it here. He'll slow down at second to throw from Helton, not in time. Now, this is where a young pitcher can either get in trouble or really grow up fast. you got a runner at third and only one out in the inning. Eliminate that out of your mind. And the infield comes in, breaking pitch is up high. Well, with the infield in, this is something Buddy Bell saying, all right, our, our team didn't hit all that great either in San Luis. We didn't score a lot of runs except those other two ball games, and we did it with the long ball. The Dodgers have struggled. I scored 24 to 2, so I think in his mind he's saying, all right, look, we can't afford to give up any runs at all. I'm going to cut down everything I can at home plate. Green has decent speed, but you got to throw strikes to have that opportunity, and Chacon's struggling now. It's 3 and 0. What if a little frustration here, too, though? Drew, you're thinking about it. It's trying to overthrow the ball a little bit. We talked about the steepness of the mound. You start to rush the front side of your body. The arm does not catch up, and the ball stays up in the strike zone. Well, the green light given Beltre, and he swings through the fastball. And why not? If you're the manager and you're Tracy and your team's struggling, turn them loose. You know you're going to get a pretty good pitch to hit. It's early in the game. See if he can catch up to it. You know, particularly if you're Jim Tracy and you're trying to break your team out of a batting slump, a collective batting slump, and he swings through or gets a small piece of the 3-1, so now it's 3-2 and two on Beltre. Eric Karros will be next. Well, you remember the old days when you were standing up to plate hitting it at the college. You start to climb that ladder. You do that 0-2, 1-2, and, two, one and two, but 3-2, do you run that chance now? First pitch he swung through, belt high. The second chest high. Do you think you can climb the ladder a little bit higher and try to get him to swing and, and tie him to get the strikeout? Or do you go with the breaking ball? He goes with the breaking ball. ball. Beltre hangs in there. Well, they didn't let me hang around too long up there. <laughs> yeah, runner at third. Maybe we can guess with him a little bit. And, uh, give you a shot at the signs along with Petrick. Where their thoughts are going. You saw the 3 2 breaking ball earlier. He comes he, back with it. Absolutely. Not a, lot of yeah. well, a lot of confidence, too. Beltre was fooled, but it was a little up in the zone. Not the worst thing in the world to put Beltre on. Karos does not run well, and maybe you can induce a double play grounder. And Petrick will go and visit with Sean Chacon. Well, a 3 2 breaking ball, what you've got to think in your mind, just throw it for a strike and really complete it and finish it off. That pitch is high. I know at home it may look like a pretty good curveball but you can see as it crossed the plate almost chest high and broke late Petrie tried to frame it into the strike zone but you want to throw when it says strike three you want to get it out over the plate down in the strike zone to where they can't handle it but yet you fooled them enough anyway with a 3-2 curveball that's something typically doesn't happen at the big league level you try to throw the perfect curveball you end up walking him that's what happened with Beltre well Carroll says struggled how many years ago was it, Drew, that he hit fourth in the lineup, fifth in the lineup, now has been dropped down to seventh in the lineup. They say the bat speed has decreased, a good slider bat speed, if you hear a scout talk. They handle the pitch anywhere from 83 to 87, but a guy with a fastball up above 90 and able to get the ball by Carroll's. Well, prior to last year, and he's been battling some back problems, five of the previous six years, he had 30 home runs, more than 100 RBIs.
And he's fallen behind two and nothing on Karos. Karos went through a rigorous off-season workout regimen to try to get the back in shape and try to get the speed back in his hands. But when you have performed at a level that he had performed at, then you have a year like last year, you're embarrassed. You can do what you have to do to get yourself back in position to be successful. Runners on the corners, and Karos moved off the plate. Three and nothing now. So Chacon... Now you wonder what effect maybe the mound's having. I mean, he's starting to overthrow the ball a little bit. You noticed when he's missed, it's been up with the fastball way out of the strike zone. A couple of curveballs down and in dirt. You wonder a little bit about that, and you also wonder if he's been able to shake the fact that it's his throw that enabled Sean Green to move up two bags to third. You gotta have a short memory in sports. The 3-0 right down Main Street, three and one on Karos. Mark Gruzelanek is due up next. No score, we're in the second. And this ball smoked deep, left field, way back, Pierre. Over his head, three-run home run, Eric Karros, and the Dodgers have broken out of their season-long slump. Well, all set up by the walks falling behind in the count, putting a couple of freebies on, and an old veteran makes you pay a little bit. On a fastball that stayed right out over the middle of the plate, Petri got talking to Chacon now. All you can do is give him some encouragement, and make the comment, throw strike. That's good enough. Well, I tell you what, Karras right on it. One of the deepest parts of the ballpark in the left center field, 390 feet away. You know you at least got one. Ends up being three with one out. So Mark Gruzelanek will step in, and he hits it in the air to right field. Walker puts away the second out, and Andy Ashby will approach. Well, good hitters will do that. You have the count in your favor, 3-1. That's what Eric Karras has done throughout his career. Jim Tracy says, we're going to play more small ball this year without Gary Sheffield. We're not going to sit back and wait for the three-run home run like we had the luxury of doing in the past, but he just got it. Well, the thing is, he defined his strike zone. He wanted the ball on a 3-1 count. If it's here, I'm going to crush the baseball. I want a middle half, and I want it down in the zone where he likes to golf the baseball. Pitch almost exactly where that fastball was. So what he does, he just picks out his zone. If it's there, I'm going to explode on it, and it's exactly what he did with it. But the small ball is something they're going to have to do. Manufacturing runs through hit and run, steal a base, first to third aggressiveness on the base path in order to get more runs. You make an interesting point. Eric Karras is a low ball hitter. Tim Wallach, the retired Tim Wallach, was mm -hmm. a great low ball hitter from the right side. And typically, you always talk about left-handers being guys that prefer low balls as Todd Helton catches the third out. But in the inning, three runs come across on the Eric Karras three-run home run, and the Dodgers have a 3 nothing lead through two innings. Coors Light, are you ready for a cold one? Downtown Los Angeles, just a couple of miles away. We are at Chavez Ravine, and for 40 years, they have thought blue since the Dodgers migrated west from Brooklyn. Eric Karros, just 15 home runs last year. Uncharacteristic of the former UCLA standout. He has the only hit. A three-run home run, really a no-doubter, to the left center field. And Andy Ashby has retired the first six he's faced. O Jose Ortiz, Ben Petrick, and Sean Chacon will take their turn against Ashby. Well, George, you would know this better than anybody. One of the things they say, the big differences between the minor leagues and the big leagues, when you make a mistake at the minor league level to a hitter, maybe it's a single, maybe it's a double. You make a mistake in the big leagues, particularly to a guy in the middle of the lineup that's usually 400 feet away. Well, and you've got to realize, too, you know, up here you make a mistake, it's well lit a little better. they got two decks, they got bigger banks of lights. It's easier to see that mistake as sure. they hit her and they hit it a lot farther. There you go. But I think that's very true that the guys here, 
There's a reason they're in the big leagues. There's a reason they hit a lot of home runs, and particularly with Carroll. You know, I just watched him in warm-ups, Drew. You mentioned the bat. He still looks pretty stiff, and it's a cool night here. He didn't look stiff swinging the bat, but just bending down for baseballs and making throws on the infield. Ortiz lets that one ride high. Two and nothing quickly on the Rocky second baseman, who's one for eight so far. Very uncharacteristic of Ashby to fall behind 3-0. and And he work his way through the bottom half of the lineup, Ortiz, Petrick, and Chacon. Now join the Rockies. They celebrate the 10th opening day anniversary. Attend the Rockies games at Coors Field on Monday, April the 8th, and receive a calendar courtesy of Coors. The action against the Astros begins at 1.05. Gates open at 11.05. Get your tickets at the Coors Field Ticket Office, the Rockies Dugout, and King Super Stores, or just by calling 1 800 388 Rock or go online with the column of the Rockies.com. Now, three and two to Ortiz. One of the keys, of course, to this Rocky season will be. Not only how Ortiz and Uribe and Pierre, because he's still a young player, play defensively, but what kind of offense they provide. And Ortiz has a lot of pop in his bat as he pops this one up foul to Eric Karros. And we'll see how he develops. He hit only 240 last year, so there are holes in his swing. Well, I think the bottom half of the lineup has to be as productive. And, and why I say that, you know, you know Walker, Helton, and Zeal are going to drive into runs. Hollinsworth's going to do his job. Pierre's going to get on base. But you mentioned those kids, and it's the catching position and up the middle that you don't allow the defense to come hurt the offense, and you don't allow the offense to disrupt what you're doing on the field. you got to be able to separate the two. Now, they were able to do that a year ago. You hope it carries over again to this year. Well, ben Petrick's also under 25. It's very unusual for a baseball team at the major league level to have four guys up the middle so young. But I've always felt in all the sports, sometimes we make too much of age. The L.A. Clippers boast that they're the youngest team in the league, and they're doing decently this year. But you know what? All that matters is if you're good. It doesn't matter how old you are. Barry Bonds is 37, and people don't mention that that frequently anymore. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Barry Bonds, for those of you who might have missed it today, the story continues. In the 10th inning, he hits a home run, walk-off home run at Pac Bell on the day that they honored him for his 73 home runs. That was number five on the season. Petrick down the left well, field line, foul. Five home runs, 11 RBIs in four games. A pretty good start for Bonds. Yeah, and he's, but hitting, you know, he's hitting about 880. And you talk about giving young guys a chance. Think about the Dodgers 20 some odd years ago when they started with Ron Say and brought the whole infield up together. Bill Say, Russell. Bill Russell at shortstop, Lopes at second base, and Garvey at first base, and Yeager behind the plate. That was a young crew. And they hung together for eight and a half seasons. You don't see that anymore. Ben Petrick to look at Ashby's 2-2. Two -two. One thing, and you can see it from our center field camera with Andy Ashby, every pitch has a lot of movement. Well, it's either going to sink or it's going to cut, but it's going somewhere. There's nothing straight about his pitches. Pretty good sinker there, and a little bit Maddox-like type sinker. The ball away from the right-hander and dove it back into the middle of the plate. Typically, with a sinking fastball, you'll stick it in on those right-handers and try to run it in under their hands. Very difficult pitch to handle or drive anywhere. And he geared up and threw it above his hands that time and strikes him out. But it, it looked like almost he was fooled. You know what I mean? It looked like he was almost looking for a breaking ball. It got out in front of the plate. Drew and was like, uh-oh, I got to make a hack at this. Because watch the plane of the swing. Watch the swing of the bat here. See, his old sore low almost looked like a roller coaster. So it looked like something maybe he was looking down. Ashby used that uh, knowledge to go up, as you spoke about, and, and just got above the bat. But it almost looked like the bat was not a smooth swing through the, through the hitting zone. Sean Chacon fouls off the first offering. Yeah. 
Sean was a good hitter growing up in Greeley, Colorado. It has not translated yet to the big leagues. Less than a handful of hits last year. Another thing about Andy Ashby, he is getting the fastball back where he threw prior to surgery. He's topped out tonight at 92, and that is generally what he would hit prior to surgery. And he locks up Sean Chacon with the breaking pitch for a second strikeout. Nine up, nine down for the Rockies. They trail three to nothing in Los Angeles. He's with the Dodgers, won a Cy Young back in 62, over 200 wins, three World Series rings, 49 shutouts. And of course, a plaque in Cooperstown. You talk about a one-two punch. Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale, our American legend, brought to you by Harley Davidson. <laughs> Top of the order, Dave Roberts, Cesar Turris, and Paul LaDuca to face Chacon. Roberts bounced a second, his first trip. I think after the last inning, they'll try to work it a little bit, Drew. After the two walks, then behind in the count for Karras' home run, that they'll take their time and see if they can get him into a hitter's count and try to take advantage of it at the top of the lineup. I think the key, too, for young pitchers, you know, they call them two times through, three times through. It's the guys that get through the lineup three times, obviously, are pretty successful. The two times through, and a second time around, a lot of guys that don't stay in the big leagues very long are not very successful. Well, Chacon proved last year that he can pitch deep into a ball game. I mentioned it earlier. 13 times, he went six innings or more. Eight times, seven innings or more out of 27 starts. So 21 pretty quality starts for Chacon last year. 2-2 two, two downstairs. That's why, George, I'd imagine as a pitcher, you want to stay away from consistent patterns. Well, you have to. I mean, that's where you might face Roberts the first time up, give him a good sinker, get a ground ball. Next time up, mix up a change up and a curve ball. You rotate it around. Unless you're just overpowering, and there's not that many guys in the league anymore that are so overpowering that they can tell you what's coming and you still can't hit it. Rockies will see two of those guys as Roberts draws a leadoff walk, and that's now the third walk issued by Sean Chacon. They'll see two of those guys Thursday and Friday. Their names Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling when Arizona has four with the Rockies at Coors Field. Of course, Kevin Brown will go here on Sunday. Oswald and Redding from Houston, two dominating young pitchers. It's going to be a tough week for the Rockies hitters. They're going to have to swing the bat. But right. Kevin Brown goes here on Sunday. He'll go against Mike Hampton. His Turris popped out foul to third base. Took something off and he gets a strike one and one on his tourists. Sean Chacon needs to get his tourists because after his tourists, the heart of the order, Laduca, Green, and Jordan. Nobody out, bottom of the third, the leadoff man aboard, and Dave Roberts. Roberts breaks, and it's ripped down the right field line. Walker's going to cut it off. Roberts is being given the green light, and he is going to score standing up. Heading to third is his tourist, and he's cut down there. He'll get the RBI. They'll score it a double, and it's 4 to nothing, L.A. Roberts scoring all the way from first as he was moving on the pitch. Pitch by Chacon in the double down the right field line. Roberts here coming around to score. It's the fourth one of the ball game. And as Torres takes off to third base, the relay system works perfectly, and the Rockies able to get the out. So 
see Helton here with a throw over, the strong throw to Zeal, and Zeal applies the tag in the first half. Now walks again. Come back to Hans Chacon. Two walks in the previous inning. The three-run home run by Karros. A walk here to the leadoff man Roberts, then the double down the right field line. Well, Paul Laduca bounced to Ortiz at second. And yeah, that's in for a strike, one and one. Now, all the guys that have had success against Chacon, it's been Laduca. 571 with a home run in his career, short career against Sean Chacon. And the guy that really, the breakout year last year, a few good stories you mentioned earlier, after all the years at the minor league level, they've been hunting for a catcher here for quite some time. And gave him an opportunity, and he took advantage of it. Well, if you look at his minor league career, George, he always hit. He hit over 300 every place well, he's ever been. He had a 300-plus career average in the minor league. You know, I don't know if you agree with this or not, Drew, but it's easy to find out what's wrong. Probably not. Let me preface It's easy to find out what's wrong with a player of why he's not here than it is why he should be here. Mm -hmm. He's too short. He's not fast enough. He doesn't throw well enough. His foot works four behind the plate. He doesn't receive the ball well enough. He doesn't call a good game. They hunt for all the wrong things to keep you from getting here. Well, once you start Xing those out of those wrong column, pretty soon they got to give you the chance at the big league level. Well, they finally gave it to him. He made him pay for it. This is fouled off as well. If you looked just at body type, you could come up with a long list of athletes in every major sport that would never play at the highest level. You know, Paul LaDuca, short. He's obviously a very strong man. Kirby Puckett, guy you know very well, mm -hmm. guy you play with. Kirby Puckett was oh. short. He was strong as a house, but he's not somebody you'd look at and say, hey, center fielder. Well, you watch him walking down the street, you'd say, he can't. how's he going to chase anything down at center? And he can't throw. Oh, he's not going to have any power because he can't swing his arms because he's too fat. <laughs> well, he could swing it. He was may have been built like a wine barrel, but he could hit it. Paul well, Duke had a great run at Arizona State. Broke the single season hits record there held by Hubie Brooks played a long time in the big leagues here's a 2-2 curve ball spanked down the left field line fair ball Sean Chacon getting lit up right now Todd Hollinsworth will get it back to the infield a stand up double for Paul LaDuca Look at the pitch. You can see Petrick asking for the ball down out of the strike zone. Nope, right up in his eyes. Yeah, it really turns on it. Boy, he had a little hitch there. That just shows you his strength, though. It was fooled just for a second. Let him go for the pitch and then hold back and then wham. And Jim Wright will make his way to the mound, the Rockies pitching coach. Last year he was in Colorado Springs. Typically, what is discussed this early in a ball game with a starter when the pitching well, coach it, comes out? You know, a lot of times guys at home are going, go out and talk to him. He gave up a three-run home run. Somebody say something. Well, you can't let a guy feel for himself. Find out where it is. Let him try to figure out what's wrong. And as a pitching coach, you're in the dugout watching. You know, is he too quick? Is he not on the back leg? Or is his front shoulder flying open? I mean, you just saw right tapping on the left shoulder. you got to keep it closed longer. And what you want, a pitcher has a tendency to fly open. When they do, Drew, your shoulders are working parallel together. And you go obviously want to be up and down. So maybe he's flattening the front shoulder fly open on some pitches. That's creating the ball up in the strike zone. You are not stay on that back leg long enough. So as a pitching coach, you observe. Then you go to the mound, and you may give him one little twist. And sure enough, it changes uh, his whole perspective of what he's trying to do on the mound, and it straightens out. If it doesn't, obviously the phone rings pretty quickly down in the bullpen, and you make a change. With one out and a runner at second, Sean Green is at the plate. He walked an inning ago, came around to score on the Caro's three-run home run. He hits it hard the other way. Runner will cross in front. Not a good idea. And Uribe... Well, he missed the tag. Now they say he did apply the tag, or Laduca went out of the baseline. I believe they're going to say he was out of the baseline. So that'll be scored 6-5-6. Six, 
Pazuka uh, committing a cardinal sin crossing in front of the baseball. Yeah, I mean, it's senseless. Where are you going to go? The ball's out in front of you. you got a very good shortstop in your rebate, and it's an easy throw over. And it's not smart base running at all by Laduca. Sure does help out the situation, though, for Chacon. The runner at second and two outs. Now you're staring at the runner at first and two outs. Jordan flew out to right in his last at bat. See, as a hitter, though, Drew, you start, you know this, from playing, you eliminate. All right, he can't get his breaking ball over for a strike consistently. That's the pitch he got me out with last year, the out pitch. He's not comfortable with his changeup. Well, you start eliminating those things, all of a sudden you go to the plate, and all you got to look for is a dead red fastball. It makes hitting much easier. Yeah, the less decisions you have to make, the less you think at the plate, the better generally you are. Sean Green dives back in. The Dodgers leading 4 to nothing. We're in the third. Sean Chacon trying to stay in the baseball game here with two outs and Brian Jordan up. And thankfully, the gold glove of Todd Helton saved Sean Green from doing what he did last inning, and that is jogging all the way to third because if he doesn't come up with that, that's going up the right field line. So Sean Chacon... A little off throwing a home plate. He's off going to first also. Yeah, this time Helton able to come up with it. I think that was in the same exact spot that Helton came off and got in front of the baseball. <laughs> 2 and 0. Oh. And we'll see if Sean Green is moving here. Well, I think they'll take advantage of not only Chacon, but Petrick, too. He has not had a lot of success throwing out runners at the big league level yet. Try to take advantage of that. He's worked very hard with his footwork receiving the baseball, but he's going to have to work and get a little bit quicker behind the plate. Your pitching staff has to help you with it. And right now, Sean Chacon is not only missing, he's missing badly, George. Yeah, you're getting pretty close to a point with just two outs here in the fourth, but you're getting close to a point now, or excuse me, in the third inning, that you're starting to think about having that phone ring. Now, see, that ball was received pretty poorly by Pete. And the reason I say that, it looked like the ball ate him up a little bit. He was looking for a ball down. All right, now watch the glove here. Let's watch Petrie behind the plate. And the only reason I say this is because as the ball comes into the plate, watch the glove. See how kind of ate him up? Yeah. Looks like he, he tried he to turn almost, versus like he was stay with it. Up. Yeah, it really did. I don't know if he was looking for fastball and got slider. But in that situation, it's a pitch where maybe it caught a little cleaner that it could have ended up being a, obviously been a strikeout. Now, the odd thing about that is on 3-0, it's almost automatic that you're going to see the fastball. <coughs> in any event, two men on and Adrian Beltre at the plate. Four walks issued in three innings for Sean Chacon. And there's a letter high strike on the outside corner. Nothing and one to Beltre. Started telling this story last time Beltre was up. He had the appendectomy that did not go right, evidently, in the Dominican Republic. So he came to the States, had another appendectomy, and was out to mid-May last year. And the first half of the season was a bit slow for Beltre. But in the second half, he started to show that pop that he demonstrated a couple of years ago. He hit 282 in the second half. Well, he lost 30 pounds through those operations, lost obviously an awful lot of strength, so it took a lot of time to get all that back and get in a position where he felt comfortable at the plate again. Yeah, in the second half last year, he put together a 17-game hitting streak. This guy could be a star. The 0-2. And Sean Chacon was fooled himself. He didn't realize that was strike three. Uh, rough inning for Chacon, but he hangs in. Dave Roberts comes around on the double by Cesar Isturis, and the Dodgers lead 4 0. And the Dodgers lead 4 0. We're at Dodger Stadium as we take a look at our Affleck trivia question. How many current Rockies have also played with the Los Angeles Dodgers? And it's the first meeting of 19 games this year with the L.A. Dodgers in the division. Buddy Bell was saying as Juan Pierre gets ready that one thing that the Rockies have to do much better than they did last year is win games in their division. They were 
too far under 500 against National League West teams in 2001. Pierre against Ashby, and he shortens up, and Beltre already six strides in on the infield grass, and Karras was coming hard also. Well, this is where Grzelanek really has to stay back at second base just in case he pulls the baseball. So now it's in a foot race. That's why I say it's such an advantage for Pierre to perfect pulling that ball up that first baseline and make Carroll's come and get the ball. He's going to outrun Ashby off the mound. And if the ball's placed in a pretty good position, it's a foot race between him and Grzelanek, and I'm not sure he could get there. I think Pierre would probably beat it out. The 3-0 to Juan, and the strike call by Rick Reed, the home plate umpire. Last year, Juan walked 41 times. That's something he'd like to improve upon this year. And he'll get a walk to lead off in the fourth inning. First base runner against Andy Ashby. But I think for a young player, the way that Uribe is, Drew, this is something that... He can really grow as a hitter. Why? Ashby's going to want to throw a lot of fastballs. Great speed at first base. Give LaDuke every chance he can to throw him out. Well, as a hitter, you've got to be able to decide that pitch is not in the zone. I got to lay off. Or you've got to protect that runner at first base. It's a difficult position in the batting order to hit, but yet a fun position because you're going to get a lot of fastballs to hit. And last year, he did not hit once in the two-hole. Well, who else on this roster would you put there? Well, Ben Petrick's a guy, if he puts the ball in play, maybe a little bit more, is a guy that perhaps could handle the two-hole. But uh, at this stage of things, you probably have to hit your rebate there. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Do you go to Ortiz? He's a little more free swinger. I don't know that I'd put I don't him there. Yeah, he doesn't make enough contact right now. Even down four to nothing relatively early in the baseball game. Pierre drawing attention from Ashby. Up the middle could be two. And it will. On the comebacker, the Dodgers turn it over. 1-6-3. Good turn by his tourists up the middle. 4 to nothing, Los Angeles. And if you're just joining us, the story's been Eric Karros, the three-run home run in the second. And Andy Ashby has been very, very good. Here's the home run, a 3-1 fastball. Knee high, but Karros went down and got it and hit it well over the left center field wall. Larry Walker swings through. The first offering from Ashby, nothing and one. Two outs in the fourth. Rockies looking for their first hit. He's doing a nice job changing speeds, changing location in the neighborhood, and doing a good job of being able to put the split finger down and away from the lefties. And, of course, the dominating part of this lineup, Walker, Helton, and Hollinsworth. One and two now on Walker. Well, you wonder, too, what pitch count well, they might let Ashby get to, 85, 90 pitches at the most? Well, you nailed it. I asked Jim Tracy before the game, and he said, we're not going to let him go above 90. Yeah, a cool night. Don't want anything stiffening up on him. There's the cut fastball in the inside half. Walker disagreed, but Rick Reed didn't. And that's the third strikeout for Andy Ashby. He's seen the minimum through four innings. The Dodgers in control, four to nothing. Worth warming up in left field. Asked Hollinsworth before the game if he had to give out a lot of tickets. He said, not really. Hollinsworth 
Only had to give one away to his brother who just graduated from UCLA. Most of his family is in Northern California. We asked our Affleck trivia question last inning. How many current Rockies have also played with the Dodgers? Todd Hollinsworth would be one. Todd Zia would be another. And Dennis Reyes was here in 97 and 98. Eric Karros looks at a first pitch strike from Sean Chacon. This has got to be a get over the hump inning for Sean Chacon. Threw a lot of pitches in the second and third. Karos reaches out and belts it down the left field line. That'll get in the corner. Karos will dig for second. And yet another double against Sean Chacon. That is the third double of the game. Karos is two for two. Well, again, you get a ball that down. And you see go out on that front leg with Karos, a good low ball hitter. But again, when you're behind in the count, you're not working ahead. And again, we talked about this just a second ago, Drew. If you're not able to get the curveball and the change up over consistently, then it makes the cutter and the sinker pretty hittable. And I think for Chacon, who struggled to get the off-speed stuff over tonight, and it's made it difficult, and the hitters have obviously just set on it. Mark Gruzelanek, the veteran. Slide to right, his first plate appearance. Looks at a breaking pitch away. Or Montreal Expo. I still can't get over, by the way, Barry Bonds. Five home runs and four ball games. Well, I'm trying to think of which month last year that he got locked in on. Every one of them. No, there was a month there where he hit a year's worth of home runs. <laughs> but he, he may obviously be back into that groove again. And one of his home runs hit the A there, <laughs> which is uh, interesting because his first two home runs, the first one came off Brownie, off of Kevin Brown, 440 feet. Juan Pierre is going to have to step back a couple, and they're going to test his arm. Caros, who's not the fastest guy in the building, will move up 90 feet on the well-hit ball by Mark Ruzelanek. You know, the ball hit on the line. Pierre really couldn't get back and position himself to get a strong throw off. He could just square up, rotate the body, and make the throw. Now a fly ball. You know, Buddy Bell is on his way out to the mound. You would doubt he has a hook with him for a couple of reasons. One, nobody's warming up. And secondly, Andy Ashby, the pitcher's up. So you're not going to pull out Chacon here. Uh, Buddy's out here. He's a little upset right now. I think he's trying to establish something. He wants to go talk to Chacon to light a fire there and also go right at Ashby. Don't mess around with it. Talk about the suicide squeeze as a possibility. A guy that can handle the bat pretty well at the plate is Ashby. Even though in a 4 nothing ball game, a ball club likes to get that fifth run. Five-run lead and stay away from a grand slam tying it. You try to put, position yourself there early in the ball game. I think Jim Tracy and everyone else in the National League has a lot of respect for the Rockies' offensive potential. Well, I'm sure, too, more and more people are going to test the ability of Zeal to play third base. And the first offering is beneath the knees, and then Andy Ashby takes a good long look at Glenn Hoffman, the third base coach. There's Glenn, and then goes over and uh, says something to Eric Karros. Here he comes. Safe at the plate, and Ashby's going to be safe at first. They execute the suicide squeeze. Let me tell you, so there's a couple of things you do as a pitcher. 
And it's difficult only because you're watching that runner at third base as you pick your leg up, because that's typically when they'll take off. With nobody on first base, you watch. The leg kicks, here comes Karras. Square around by Ashby, throws it out front. All that Chacon can do is try to get out. Now, one thing Petrick should maybe do is get a little farther out in front of the plate, block the play. He seems standing right over the top of the plate to try to feel the ball, allow Carroll's to slide under it. But as a pitcher, I was taught, throw the ball directly at the header's head or chest area. What's going to happen? He's going to get out of the way. A very difficult pitch to try to bunt. Everybody yells that it's a squeeze. He's coming as loud as they possibly can. And as a pitcher, you throw it directly at the hitter. It makes it extremely hard for him to bunt the baseball. Your catcher catch it. Hopefully apply the tag. If you happen to hit the batter, you got first and third. Now, that's why you give Kara some credit. Evidently, he broke just at the right time that Chacon never picked it up. Well, and, and Ashby committed late. He didn't drop the hand up the bat and make the turn. Now two and nothing on Dave Roberts with Ashby at first. One out in the fourth. The Rockies have fallen behind five to nothing. Just four hits for the Dodgers. The Rockies without a hit in the baseball game. And now three and nothing, and Sean has already walked four. He threw five pitches in the first inning. He got two ground outs and a foul pop to Todd Zeal. Couldn't have looked any better. And he has scuffled since then, and that is walk number five. The right-hander Rick White starting to get loose down in the Rockies bullpen. Chacon will hit sixth in the inning when the Rockies come back up again. So the bullpen somewhat shorthanded as starting the season out on the road. Justin Spire put on the DL. Uh, six instead of seven. Well, in all likelihood, when the Rockies go home, they'll make a move because they have to play a lot of baseball games without a day off coming up. And the curveball's out of the zone to his tourists. And you mentioned this a couple of innings ago. The Dodgers, particularly the guys at the top of the order, they're going to be very patient now with Chacon all over the place. And he gets a good pitch to hit, lines it up the middle. Here comes Pierre and rounding thirds Ashby. They're going to hold them up. Last thing they want is Andy Ashby in a collision at the plate or even having to slide. So the bases are now loaded up for Paul LaDuca. Well, second base hit within the last two innings by Asturias by the Dodgers shortstop. This one a line drive right back up the middle and out over the head of Chacon into center field. And with Ashby at second, good call, Drew. There's no sense taking that chance for injury with Ashby. Asturias comes up with another base hit, and the Dodgers got him full with just one out in the inning, and LaDuca, who doubled on a hanging curveball in his previous at bat down the left field line. Nowhere to put them. They're all loaded up. The Dodgers a chance to break this thing wide open in the fourth. And LaDuca evidently went around. Nothing in one. And he looks down at the first base umpire, Tim Tashida, and says, okay. Last year with runners in scoring position, fifth in the National League. You know, White has sit down now, and Dennis Reyes has gotten up the left-hander, trying to get done in a hurry to try to get up and get ready for Green. That would have to happen in a hurry if they can't get the double play and in the inning. Hard down the right field line, foul. You know what Paul LaDuca can do? Paul LaDuca is a really good bad ball hitter. It does not have to be down the middle or even a strike for Paul LaDuca to get the fat part of the bat on it. And why is that? He stays back. He's patient. Keeps his hands back. The front side may go or the weight may follow through on the, the bottom half of the body. But boy, those hands stay back. And he just uses his strength to drive the baseball. Dennis Reyes, the former Dodger, getting loose and getting loose in a hurry. One out in the Dodger fourth. Three in the second, one in the third. 
They already have one across here, and the bases are loaded. Nothing and two on LaDuca. Good pitch there. Maybe the best pitch Chacon has thrown in a while. Got it in on the kitchen of Paul LaDuca. 91-mile-an-hour fastball. Tough to catch up to. Runner at third is Andy Ashby. At second is Dave Roberts. And at first, the guy who just singled is Cesar is Turris. Popped up on the right field line. Helton's going to give chase. And he's going to run out of room. Nice catch made. Unfortunately, they're not going to record the out for the Rockies. Sean Green is due next. This could be the last hitter for Sean Chacon. This is lined down the right field line. And it's going to get fouled by a couple of yards. Well, spring training not only for the players, good fit for summer play. Be one of the first 20,000 adults to come through the gates at Coors Field for the Rockies game Friday, April the 12th, and receive a workout pass courtesy of 24-hour fitness. Action against the Diamondbacks. It begins at 7.05. The gates open at 5.05. Big tickets available at the Coors Field ticket office, the dugout and King Superstores. Call 1-800-388-ROCK or just go online with the Colorado Rockies.com. This is going to get in the seats also. As Zeal comes over. No, it won't. That thing came back. That was over the dugout. And there is the large foul territory paying off for the Rockies. That's and Todd Zeal did not give up on it. Yeah, great job by Zeal. Went over, obviously knows this ballpark very well. And in the long years in the National League, able to get over to the dugout and make the catch. Buddy Bell decides. Seen in us. Dennis Reyes, the left-hander, will come on to face screen and try to keep this ball game a 5-0 ball game. Well, Sean got Paul LaDuca in a battle, and Chacon will go out on the short end of a 5 to nothing count. Dennis Reyes will be next. Reyes. Season Sean Chacon was looking for. He goes three and two thirds. He gives up five runs, all of them earned on five hits. He's responsible for all three base runners. There are two outs, and he gives way to Dennis Reyes, who came over in the Gabe White trade from Cincinnati. A very versatile reliever. Spent a couple of years here in LA, 97 and 98, and then 99, 2000, and 2001 in a red uniform. Last year's numbers, very versatile. Can start, long man, short man out of the bullpen. Good setup. With the emergence of Kent Merker to be your lefty specialist. Reyes been moved into the long shot. Long reliefers roll here with the Rockies. And this is a guy, not surprisingly, when you talk about the talent of Sean Green, who hits left-handers also. Last year, just a notch under 300 against left-handed pitching. Well, this is where you really build bonus points, too, with your club and Buddy Bell when you come into bases loaded situation with two outs facing a left-hander. You work out of this situation, you're not as hesitant as a manager. Well, this is going to be fair down the right field line. Extra bags for Green. It could clear the bases. His tour is coming around, and he's going to score standing up a three-run double for Sean Green. It's eight-zip. You heard it on the bus coming out, walking around the lobby of the hotel. The Rockies feared coming in against a ball club that had only scored two runs against their biggest rival, the San Francisco Giants, that didn't want to come into this ballpark for the being 0-3 and being hacked off. Well, they're hacked off, and they're swinging the bats pretty good tonight. Green just goes down and gets the slider from Reyes down the right field line. Walker gives chase, but not before the base is loaded is empty. Pretty good pitch down and away from him, and Green with a long arm, long swing, able to extend and get the baseball. 
Eight runs charged to Sean Chacon. Beltre. Or excuse me, Brian Jordan swings through the first offering, and it's nothing in one as Sean Green stands at second base. One thing Jim Tracy was saying, he's almost prophetic now before the game, he said, I'm not going to panic. We lost three baseball games. Do we want to start the season that way? No. He said, but I also know that Sean Green's not going to hit a buck 82, that Paul LaDuca is not going to hit 083 all year. Brian Jordan's not going to hit 100 all year. He said Eric Karros is not going to get hit 125. He just went right down his lineup. Everybody's hitting below 200 after that San Francisco series, and he made a great point. Well, Tracy has been a successful minor league manager and obviously had success here last year as a manager, Drew, and I think he knows how to guide this ball club. And he knows not to manage for the fans, not to manage for the L.A. Times. When everybody starts to write them off and wants everybody, let's admit, we're rebuilding. This is a rebuilding year. You can't win anything this year. He's able to keep a calming effect over his ball club. And they were in the race into October last year. They won 86 and 76. He was the runner-up in the National League for manager of the year. Did Jordan go around? They'll check it out. And Tim Tashita says no. Tim Cheetah, the first base umpire, in a rookie year, 1987. And Jordan down the left field line. That will score the ninth run. Green will coast in. And Jordan with the fifth Dodger double of the baseball game. We're not yet out of the fourth. Seven hits in the ball game, five doubles and a home run. A long ball, extra base hit. Really gotten after it. Another RBI now for Jordan. That's his first of the year, 2002, for Brian Jordan. Ball down and in and allowed in to turn and get the head out and pull it right down the third base line. Adrian Beltre will be the ninth man to come to the plate here in the fourth. The Dodgers scored two runs in their first three ball games. They have broken out tonight at the Rockies' expense. I'm going to give you a little trivia. We're talking about Tim Cheetah, the first base umpire in 1987 as a rookie. Parents live in Minnesota, grew up in Minnesota. I'm throwing some hints at you here, Drew. Mm -hmm. He caught a guy named Necro in Anaheim. They thought cutting a baseball. And the poor kid behind the plate was the rookie, said his parents, everybody chewed on him everywhere, saying, this is the Twins. We've got a chance for the playoffs, a chance for the World Series. And you just busted our number four starter. <laughs> Necro served his 10-game suspension, and obviously Cheetah became a pretty good big league umpire. It was funny because Huey Lewis came and played the national anthem, or sung the national anthem, I should say, and he walked to the mound with a with a sander and a and a and a jigsaw <laughs> when he went out to the mound. He had a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. And so did Necro about the whole situation. That was Joe Necro, not Phil. What, it runs in the family? Uh, no. Uh, Phil had the big knuckler. Joe could actually break 80. <laughs> <laughs> Phil couldn't break 80 unless he was riding in a cab. The knuckleball dance, though. Oh, yeah. Two and nothing on Adrian Beltre. And Reyes's pitch has popped up. He got a good pitch to hit. And Walker will record the final out but in the inning five runs come across nine men come to the plate the big hit a three-run double from sean green the rockies plenty of catching up to do down nine zip without a hit last inning the dodgers lead at nine to nothing with george frazier i'm drew goodman from dodger stadium in los angeles guys next time you're up at the bar to buy a round or bring you home a 12-pack for the big game go for the original original cores and we're used to seeing cores with snow in the background in the rocky mountains how about with a palm tree in the background the rockies will come up in the top of the fifth without a hit against andy ashby the only guy to reach juan pierre walked last inning and he was promptly erased on a double play ground ball by juan uribe todd helton todd zeal todd hollandsworth to face andy ashby you know, one of the best things about coming to the West Coast, yeah. L.A., is, of course, you come here a lot on the Nuggets telecast. I like L.A. I well, love I like L.A. LA too, as, as the song goes, I love L.A. But, 
for John Reynolds, yes. our floor director. John Absolutely. will be doubling up, by the way, on Sunday. He'll do the Rockies-Dodgers afternoon game and then go over and do the Nuggets and Clippers a couple minutes from here at Staples Center because John is all about... Television. Making, he's all about making paychecks. That's right. No, he's all about getting coffee and taking care of us and making sure everything's all right. Two and nothing on Helton, and that pitch is at the knees, two and one. Well, JR gets your coffee. He gets whatever you want. Well, and I've known him longer than you have. Yeah, but you're eating Dodger dogs awful bad. <laughs> you're on your third one now. Come on now. <laughs> I have not touched a Dodger dog yet. They're good, though. Hey, yes, and, they are. And the game's still early. Well, they don't serve them till the fifth. And Todd Helton draws a leadoff walk. Second base runner for the Rockies. The other, yes, Juan Pierre by the walk. They have not getting a hit in this baseball game. I'm trying to see if they've hit a ball hard against Andy Ashby. And just looking back at the scorebook, I really don't remember a ball that was uh, even allowed out. Maybe the one hopper right back at Ashby that Helton hit. That's he was probably able to retrieve. You that's know what, George? Think that, that's it. Todd Zeal. He's got three hits so far this season. All of them doubles. Well, Zeal, I, you know, a lot of people talk about his stance at the plate and maybe not his preparation what it looks like ready to hit but he is very relaxed and it's all about timing very upright the hands are relaxed I think but that's it, one of the keys to being fast take all the tension out of your arms well and he rotates you know if you watch his hands as the pitch comes he'll rotate them back into that hitting position and just explode on the baseball George as you know more tension you have in the arms the slower you're going to be and Todd Zeal is as relaxed as they come you know, Nate Colbert did that, rested the bat on his shoulders. He was pretty good. This ball slapped the other way. Base hit, first hit off of Ashby. Helton had to jump to get out of the way. And the Rockies with the first two men aboard here in their half of the fifth. Well, let's take another look at that swing. Now watch the eyes as they follow that ball in and then the explosion. Look at it, right on top of the bat as the ball was... Approaching to the plate. Just throw the ball, pitch away, drive it away. That's exactly what Zeal did. Boy, what a great replay that was, too, with the head tracking the baseball all the way in, Drew, then the extension of the arms out front. There you go, kissing up to the guys in the truck. That is a nice job. And you're right. <laughs> Todd, Todd Hollinsworth, 0 for 1, he grounded out. And he swings through that pitch on the outside corner. You know, I think it's hard. Whenever last year's hitting so well, it was a 368 at the time of the injury, nine home runs. Yep, 368 and 33 ball games. But then to keep that aggressiveness back, I want to say anxious. You know, so anxious to swing the bat, so anxious to get off the ground and hit very well. And he struggled a little bit here early. But part of that is sometimes you get too aggressive and you try to attack the ball too much. And I think it's hard for Hollinsworth because. He has performed at such a high level, and he was so anxious for this season to start that it's hard to temper that emotion and temper it to the point that you just stay back long enough and then explode because, boy, his hand's quick. Uh, bat speed through the zone that he did not want to start out this season hitting a buck 25. And hitters will talk to themselves. If I read his lips correctly, he just said, stay back. Here's the one-two from Ashby. Well, you also got to think in the back of his mind. I mean, you try to erase it as a player. But, of course, the spider fracture in that front leg off of a foul ball that you, know, you get too quick, get out in front of that. You know, you got to, you have to think. I mean, I, I don't know how you could put it out of your mind. I think it'd be very difficult as a hitter to eliminate that out of your mind and just go play. That's a great pitch. Tailing fastball from Ashby. Fans, Todd Hollinsworth. Well, you, you, you go hard with something in. He's running a sinker down and away with a slider. Then all of a sudden, whoop, you take something off the pitch, really sell it with the body language. He's got Hollinsworth out on the front part of that front leg. Then very difficult to stay back. And once you commit yourself with the velocity that he swings the bat, it's tough to hold up and lay off of that ball. 
Fourth strikeout for Andy Ashby. Ortiz, breaking pitch for a strike. Regardless of, of what happens from here on out in the baseball game, Jim Tracy has to be thrilled. Here's Andy Ashby, a guy that he's really counting on to make 30-plus starts this year and be one of the horses. Hasn't pitched since last April, and he's been marvelous thus far coming off of elbow surgery. Well, the positive side of this is back-to-back. -back. He did it very well in his last start here against Cleveland. Went six innings in spring training. And that start here at Dodger Stadium, now he comes right back and does it again in his very next start. That tells you this is healthy. Yep. Meaning the elbow. I grabbed your elbow. Meaning yeah, this they, is they healthy, went, and the guy at home didn't yeah, see he, that, he, did he? He didn't see that, George. <laughs> <laughs> you, me, looked at, me, you looked at me a little stunned. Yeah, well, let me explain <laughs> something here. See the picture there? Yeah, where is that, these, that's is that all, what he gets that, to see? Yeah, that's all they see. Really? Yeah. Here's the 0-2 to Ortiz, and he is sawed off. A roller to third. Beltre will get the out at first. The runners move up, and there are two outs. Beltre had to make a decision there. Do I field the bat or the ball? Fortunately for the Dodgers, he fielded the bat. And now don't do a Roger Clemens. Just hand the bat. To the... <laughs> there you go. See, now you wouldn't have said that unless he would have thrown it at a Met. Being a Mike Piazza and a Met fan. Well. Had to bring that part up. But you're right. As a fielder, very <laughs> difficult to concentrate. The bat rolling at you. A couple of pieces coming directly at you to go ahead and feel the baseball, make the good throw at first base. Yeah, base hit here, no, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it gets you back going in the right direction. More importantly, it's a positive move for Ben Petrick. Petrick looking for his first hit of the year. He struck out in the third. 0 for 4 on the season. On well, a positive note, spring training, Petrick hit 310. 13 for 42. Uh, 10 of those 13 hits for extra base hits. I was just going to say, his slugging percentage was outstanding. He hit five triples in the spring. Well, he's got good speed, former running back. He's the offensive player of the year in the state of Oregon, recruited by a lot of Pac-10 teams. This is hard on the ground. It is Turris. He goes to his left, makes a nice play. The Rockies got a couple aboard. They got their first hit, but they could not push one across against Andy Ashby. Ashby sawing off for Tees. 9-0. The fifth inning, the Rockies with just one hit. The Dodgers have seven. Eric Karros, one of the hitting stars of the game, He's got a couple of hits, a three-run home run in the second, and he doubled and scored an inning ago. Visit bankone.com, the official online bank of the Colorado Rockies, to understand the other great American pastime, making money. And appropriate now that I would uh, hand that to John Reynolds, who's, as we said, all about making money. Garros from San Diego originally went to Patrick Henry High School there. That's cranked down a lot of big-time athletes over the years and then was an All-American at UCLA. Dennis Reyes, beginning his second inning of the work, he came in in relief last inning of Sean Chacon. And Chacon gave up eight earned runs in three and two-thirds. Took a lot off there, and Karros way out in front. One and two to the Dodger first baseman. I think one of the keys to the Dodgers this year, not only the health of Andy Ashby and the return of Kevin Brown, who was not good on opening day, but also can Eric Karros bounce back and provide close to the offensive numbers that he had most of the 90s. The 2-2 two -two from Reyes. And again, he goes off speed. This time, Karos hangs in there and fouls it back. On the ground, diving stop by Zeal. He smothers that he won't have a play, and Karos is three for three. Now, nice play by Zeal, too, just to knock it down. You know, you got a pull hitter up, and you're throwing him off-speed pitches, even if you cheat a little bit to the line. 
You see him start to take a couple of steps on the pitch and then just hits off the glove and he can't find the baseball until it's too late. Zeal made a great play going to his backhand in St. Louis to save a double, and he actually got an out at first on that play. So the leadoff man aboard, and Karos and Mark Ruzalanik will come up. <laughs> One and nothing to Gruzelanik. There's a strike, one and one. Cruz Atlantic last year sprained his ankle in June. You may recall he got off to a tremendous start. In fact, he hit four home runs, four straight days in the month of April. Now you expect that from Barry Bonds. You expect that maybe from a Helton or a Walker, not from a Cruz Atlantic. Yeah, that's a pretty nice play there by Ortiz to come in and charge the baseball, the quick underhand toss. Good play. Cruz Atlantic has a little bit of speed, too, up the base pass. So Gruzelanek is retired on the fielder's choice. Karos moves to second, and Ashby comes up. He of the suicide squeeze his last time, a successful suicide squeeze. And Reyes goes right after him. Remember back in 93, George? Uh -oh. They said, no, you don't remember, probably. <laughs> you, don't, you, you might not remember yesterday afternoon at your advanced I'm just age. Kid, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's nothing in two. Andy Ashby was really befuddled, and, and, and honestly, he was shaken to pitch at Coors Field. It just did not work for him at Coors Field, and the Rockies, after a few months of watching it, decided to move him to San Diego. Well, I think, obviously, a lot of young guys come to Coors Field. They either handle it or don't handle it, and then all of a sudden, you just don't want to pitch there. And going on over to San Diego and not being counted on maybe quite as heavily, he was able to work himself into a pretty good position there. You mentioned earlier, 17-game winner in 1998, 14-game winner in 99, and then on over to Philadelphia as a free agent. Yeah, and the, most, uh, the majority of those wins in 99 came in the first half because he was an all-star that season as well. So Ashby, the first strikeout victim of Dennis Reyes and Dave Roberts, steps in and swings through a slider. Roberts had all of 12 at-bats last year for the Cleveland Indians. He was 4 of 12. 165 career at-bats coming into opening day this year. And the guy who hits behind him, Cesar Torres, is 22. So the Dodgers are putting a lot of faith in two very young players at the top of their lineup. Exactly, and he's the guy that beat out Tom Goodwin, the former Rocky that came over, played center field most of the year last year for the Dodgers. And the Dodgers, Dodgers has, they have eaten his contract, which was a pretty good amount of money to, in order to open up a spot for Roberts to take on an everyday basis. Well, the book on Roberts, and it's a book that still has a lot of pages to be written, obviously. As you see, Philadelphia wins at home against Florida at the Vet. Cubs are scuffling early in the season. Pittsburgh's playing very well. The book is he runs real well and plays good defense. We'll see how he does offensively. Pounds this one towards the hole. Diving stop by Ortiz. And he won't have a play as Roberts runs too well. So it's an infield hit. Karros moves to third. And he quickly gossips with his former teammate Todd Zeal. First and third with two outs. Dave Roberts hitting from the left side can really motor. Well, left-handed hitter, you get a little run on it anyway. Then you see a ball, you think it's out into the gap. Great play by Ortiz to knock the ball down. Realizes he doesn't have a play on Roberts at first, but is able to hold Karros out at second. Yeah, you're right. There's a reason, but a mistake that time by Reyes, too. That, that was a breaking ball, but it was left right in the middle of the plate. Very hittable pitch. The one previously was out of the strike zone, and Roberts had difficult time trying to make contact. His tourist is two for three. And he chops this one toward Uribe. He gloves and throws in one motion. That's a gorgeous play. And he gets Reyes out of the inning. There were a couple of hits, a couple of men left. The Dodgers lead it nine to nothing. We're through five innings at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles.
for Dennis Reyes as it's 9-1-2 and two in the Rockies half of the sixth inning. Just one hit in the baseball game for the Rockies. Todd Zeal had it in the fifth. So Shumpert for Reyes. You make the call. Who leads the Dodgers in career wins? Is it A, Don Sutton, B, Don Drysdale, C, Oral Hershiser, Gordy's brother, or D, the great Sandy Koufax? I'm going to say it's Don So did you make Drysdale. up the question, though? No, I didn't. I think you did. And Sutton won over 300 games. But not here. But he didn't win them all in a Dodger uniform. I'm going for Earl Hershiser. I'm going to say Drysdale. You read the question, didn't I, you? I read the question. I didn't see the answer. No, you saw the answer. No, you made it all no, up and I, gave it to the no, truck again. No, I didn't. I promise you. Shump looks at strike one. Another guy who was out early today taking extra batting practice, which is very typical of the hardworking Shumpert. Guy who's worked hard to become a regular in the major leagues. What I mean by regular, obviously Terry doesn't start, but he's on the roster from day one, and there wasn't much question. Buddy Bell loves this guy. Well, he's so versatile. Can play in the outfield, spelled a little bit in left field. First third, anything up the middle. And I'll tell you what else he brings, George, and something that Buddy has told us about on several occasions this year as Terry can't get the breaking pitch from Ashby, and that's the fifth strikeout for Andy Ashby. But Terry Shumpert is a great locker room presence, and the chemistry of this club is as good as it's been in a long time. And Buddy Bell is quick to mention that. And you say, well, what, what does that mean in baseball, where a lot of times it's an individual situation, there's, there's only one batter up at the plate, he can't exactly pass the baseball to somebody else. But chemistry, George, you know you played 10 years in the big well, leagues. That's very important, isn't it? Very, very important that a clubhouse gets along and that they go out and perform as a unit and they're able to forget the bad and remember the good. And I think Shumpert's one of those guys, whether he's 0 for 4 or 4 for 4, the same smiles on the face on a daily basis and goes about his business in the right way and really realizes, I think, after being told by Jim Leland that it was time to go be a player coach in AAA. Your career's winding down. You're not going to get another shot. Well, here we are three-plus some three plus years later that Shump has developed into a very quality utility man, a guy that can swing the bat off the bench and do a lot, a lot of positive things. So as a result of that, Terry Shumpert's going to get an opportunity to be in the big leagues. He's got a body of about a 25-year-old. No, oh, he's strong. Yeah, well, he takes great care of himself. Yeah, Terry, a couple years ago, hit 347. Last year, he hit 289. Pierre's retired on the comebacker. Uribe with two outs and Ashby as loose as you can be with a nine-run lead. And he consistently tonight has gotten strike one. Yeah, 80 pitches in the ballgame now for Ashby just through, about to work through his sixth inning. 0-2 here with two outs. And it'll be interesting to see if they bring him out for the seventh. He's getting close to that 90 pitch limit, and something tells me this may be the last we see of Andy Ashby. Well, and obviously he'd like to get into that bullpen in a hurry just because there's six of them down there and not really any of them are proven at this point other than Orozco. And Beltre cuts that one off. Another one, two, three inning for Andy Ashby. He has been marvelous. The Dodgers, three, four, and five in the Dodger lineup. Nine to nothing they lead. Drew Goodman along with George Frazier from Dodger Stadium. Our next, uh, you make the call. The question again, who leads the Dodgers in career wins? Now, you said Hershiser, I said Drysdale. And no, I said Drysdale, and you said Hershiser. And we were it's both wrong. It's Don Sutton. <laughs> but I was more right than you were because I had the first name correct. What? You buying that? No. Okay. But it's a nice try. Don Sutton ended up winning 300-plus so uh, games. Hold on a minute. How's your Dodger dog? Dodger dog's excellent. Did you you said you were, you were going to take me out to what, noodles and something or other right. tonight? Yeah. So I can't eat my whole Dodger dog. I'll yeah, fill you can. up. Sure you can. There's Rick White's numbers from last year. 3.88 ERA. Opponents hit just 257 against him in 55 games. And this will be the second appearance this year for Rick White. Well, Dan O'Dowd tried to do with White. And obviously Jones, James, Jimenez. What do they all have in common? Well, good hard sinkers. Keep the ball on the ground and course field and try to induce a lot of more ground ball outs. And if they give up the base hit on the ground, they obviously want to keep the ball not in flight at course field. And you get a lot of veteranship out of this bullpen. You got guys that have been around the game. 
And I think you need that because at Coors Field, obviously you're going to have bad outings. It's not, you just can't prevent it. It's just, it's going to happen. And what you have to do is obviously have that short memory. So you can come back the next day, get back at another ball game in a hurry. Rockies have made a change defensively also. Terry Shumpert is now your shortstop. So double switch employed by Buddy Bell. Paula Duca, 1-1 one, one, the count. One and two. Leduca will turn 30 next week. Born in Brooklyn, spent his childhood in Southern California and Arizona, chops that one foul. Friday night crowd here at Dodger Stadium. They've drawn over 3 million 16 times, more than any other team in baseball history. I think the Rockies one day will join that group. Rockies have done it for nine seasons. And there's a good look at Dodger Stadium. You know, for, for one of the ballparks, George, and you played in this stadium, one of the ballparks that Goes back to the 60s as this is hit hard right at Todd Zeal. And he makes the play across to Todd Helton for the first out. Usually, you, you know, you go to a Shea Stadium, you go to Bush Stadium, which has great tradition. You, you kind of get a feel, though, that it's an older ballpark and they're thinking about a new ballpark. They're doing that in New York. Once they can get finances together, they have a new ballpark, hopefully to open in St. Louis by 2005. But Dodger Stadium is venerable. Dodger Stadium has stood the test of time. This is still one of the most pleasant places to go and watch a ball game. Well, what they've done, they've built it, obviously, a very modern ballpark years ago. Now they've added the luxury suites throughout the low section here, right, even with us. This is driven to deep right field by Green, and Walker's going to play it off the wall. He's going to fire to second. Green's got a hustle, and they're going to get him at second. Great play by Larry Walker. Larry Walker played that off the wall beautifully and then gunned down the very fast Sean Green. How often has Green looks back and says, who is that guy? How often do you see a ball off the top of the wall end up as an out at second? Uh, Green realizes about right here that Walker's going to turn around and make a clean catch on it. And then not much left but an out at second base. Walker bare hands, then the perfect throw in. That's why he has the gold gloves that he has. Not only does he catch it, but he can throw it and with a lot of accuracy. You know, Green hustles out of the boxers, maybe not a play at second base, but the soft jog up the line cost him. Well, sometimes you see players go into the automatic two-bag drill, and, and that's mm -hmm. what Sean yeah, Green exactly. And Sean Green's normally a guy who busts it, uh -huh. but he, he said that's off the top well, of the I mean, wall. It's either it's either gone or it's a double. When he's thinking it's a 9 to nothing ball game. You know, Walker's standing there. Maybe he won't be able to make a play on it here. Well, fans, remember, the sellout crowd expected for opening day, downtown parking spaces at a premium. Guests are encouraged to use public transportation to get to Coors Field. The RTD Rockies ride and light rail, including the new station, opening at the Union Terminal are great ways to get to the ballpark. More information, call 303 Rockies. Nothing and one on Brian Jordan. Good breaking pitch by Rick White, nothing in two. 
Another little fact passed along by Mike Helling, our producer, which is of great interest. Dodger Stadium is now the fourth oldest ballpark in baseball. You have, you have Fenway, you have Yankee Stadium, of course, Wrigley Field in Chicago. That's it. And Jordan pounds it at Jose Ortiz, and he'll flip to Helton. And other than the hit by Sean Green, nothing much happening in the Dodgers' six. Great throw by Walker to cut down Sean Green. Nine to nothing, L.A. Two games tomorrow at 8 in the Mountain Time Zone, then a 2 o'clock afternoon game on Sunday, and then the home opener on Monday. And it all gets rolling on Fox Sports Net at 12.30 is the... Killer Bees come to town. Craig Vigio, Bagwell, Berkman, and Richard Hidalgo, and that starts with H. And a new manager. And Jimmy a new manager, Williams Jimmy coming Williams. over from the Boston Red Sox. Mm -hmm. Set and visited today with the other candidate. One of the finalists for that job, Jim Fergozzi, here scouting for the Atlanta Braves. Walker, a couple of hops, and his tourists, and Cesar throws out walk, one gun. Uh, very good young arms with the Houston Astros, Redding, Oswald, Miller, guys that can bring it. Reynolds, we'll get a shot at looking at him at Coors Field along with Oswald, and that's then Schilling and Johnson come to town. Todd Helton, 0 for 1, and a walk. Fouls this back. George, how about this? Sandy Ashby, a ground ball pitcher. Mm -hmm. 19 outs have been recorded. Ten ground balls, five strikeouts. Pretty efficient night by Ashby. And if you, again, are the manager of the Dodgers, Mr. Tracy, you got to be extremely pleased with this. He's one of those guys quietly that will go against most teams' number threes, number four starters, and he will be very successful through the year. He's a legit number two guy. And there's a guy who can start. Yeah, a guy came over in the trade has caused somewhat of a ruckus here in the locker room at the end of spring training, wanting to be traded because he had been pushed into the bullpen. Felt like he should be a starter. And he put him down into the bullpen. You have pretty good depth if Omar Dahl doesn't make your starting rotation. Well, you know, they signed Ishii, as I pronounce that correctly. I'll let you... Work with me on that tomorrow, Drew, because he's starting in the well, ball We're going to probably have to say it quite a bit tomorrow. Yeah, he's starting for the Dodgers tomorrow, $13.3 million. And so the point is, they felt like he's best suited for the rotation. Now, in his last start in spring training, he hit, he walked seven, hit three. So obviously, if his control is off tomorrow, meaning issue, if his control is off tomorrow, they'll go to Dahl, I think, and put him back into the rotation and stick issue down into the bullpen area. But Dahl's been pretty good. And particularly, if you look at those numbers for Arizona in 1999. That'll scatter the dugout, by the way. There's yeah. Omar Dahl. Don't leave home without your glove. Yeah. Omar Dahl, 16-9 for Arizona. And in 2000, started the year 2-10 with a 7.22 earned run average. They traded him to Philadelphia. Not much success there. Then in 2001, turned it around. Went 13-7 for Philadelphia. That's a pretty tough year there when you go 4 and 19. Two and two now on Helton. Sosa starting to heat up. Three home runs now for Sammy. And Todd chops that one over the dugout. Mets in Atlanta. I think they're going to battle each other for a long time this summer. St. Louis bounces back, beats Houston down at Astros Field. Helton goes down and rolls this one to second. Two outs in the seventh. Well, April's the month to get all your new Rocky gear at your Colorado Rockies dugout store. The stores are full of the hottest new styles of T-shirts, jackets, hats, and more. During April, every $25 you spend will earn you two free tickets to any home game from April 9th through the 30th. This is the deal of the year. 
Stop by our five locations in Boulder, Colorado Springs, Fort Collins, Greeley, or Littleton, or just call 303-721-1234. Brent Butler is going to pinch hit for Todd Zeal, and I imagine stay in the game and play third base. Zeal went one for two. He has the Rockies' only hit in this game. Butler, who hit over 400 in the spring, was sent down initially, and then when Spire went on the 15-day disabled list, he was called up and was in St. Louis for opening day. And he hits it in the hole. His tourist gobbles it up, and three more ground ball outs for Andy Ashby. Eric Karros will be up second in the Dodger half for the seventh. He has a three-run home run in the game. Nine to nothing, Los Angeles. Some changes for the Rockies. Brent Butler will stay in the game and play third. Shepard's playing short for the second inning in a row. And Greg Norton has come in for Todd Helton as he talks to John Shelby. And Norton will play first. Rick White will begin his second inning of work. Adrian Beltre, Eric Karros, Mark Ruzalanek scheduled. Well, the storyline in this one is very simple. Andy Ashby has been next to unhittable. And the Dodger bats, quieted by San Francisco in the opening series of the season, have broken out tonight initially against Sean Chacon. Yeah, and the nine hits, five of those for extra base hits to go along with those five walks. The walks hurt Chacon throughout this ball game. Three walks and then the three-run home run. Very difficult to overcome if you can't find the strike zone. Beltre 0 for 2 and a walk, and White starts him out with a slider for a strike. Doesn't it seem like recently, in the last couple of years, more pitchers than not, I think the exact percentage is 57%, now have the Fu Manchu. 57? 57. Was that opening day percentages? Yeah, it was opening day was percentages, it? so if somebody shaved since the tough then, guy it, look? it's not accounted for. Of course, a lot it of that goes back to the Goose Gossage. Well, Gossage, Oakland A's days, and Charlie mm -hmm. Finley gave him money if he could grow a mustache. Yeah. Of course, Raleigh Fingers with the big handlebar mustache. Did you ever Is do it? Closer? Oh yeah. That turned gray and it went away. <laughs> now you use uh, that coloring. Uh, yeah, it didn't system. work. It's worked nicely. <laughs> Going to the holes, Terry Shumpert to throw out Beltre. Looks like Andy Ashby now he is done for the evening. His guy's coming by and shaking his hands. Our bank one game summary. Caro's perfect. Three-run home run, double, single. Ashby, one hit through seven innings. He answered any questions about the elbow surgery from last spring. And Sean Chacon had a good first inning and then struggled after that. Now, no. for Eric Caros to... Produce a cycle, he needs a triple. Well, okay, what, I'm gonna what, add, what no. he really needs is a collision in the outfield, and we don't want to see that. No. Because Eric Karros does not get many triples. George is furious. No, how many triples going, do you think he's got okay, in his career? I'll say four. How many? I'll say four. Really? You think that many? He's probably more than that. Well, how many do you think it is? Well, four? I said four. It's nine. See, I told you it was more than that. I was right. Coming into this year, <laughs> nine. But that's only in 5,500 at bats. So, <laughs> yeah. so one every uh, 500 and some odd at bats. Shumpert gloves and throws out the fleet Eric Caros for the second out. Second Does not White. look like he's going to get his cycle tonight. No. Rick White's been very effective with the ground ball outs. Five so far out of the, or four out of the five batters face. A good sinking fastball mixed in with a slider. Mark Ruzalanik will step in. He's nothing for three. In fact, he's the only guy in the lineup that has not been on base tonight. You know, there are glamorous roles in the bullpen, and George, you know this better than anyone, and there are less glamorous relief assignments. Obviously, tonight for Rick White, he's just being asked by Buddy Bell 
to eat up some innings. Exactly. Give me some innings. Let's try to get through on through this ball game with them trailing nine to nothing here in the bottom of the seventh inning. White is due up in the next inning. Here's the fourth hitter. He might buy another inning out of it. You never know. Yeah, well, it's a double switch. It's a while before he's up. Maybe you get three innings out of him. Save your bullpen. You are one man short to normally carrying six men in the bullpen versus seven. And Terry Shumpert involved in all three outs. Two assists and a put out for Shump. Nice inning by Rick White. We'll go to the eighth. The Rockies still being shut out. One hit in seven innings, and now some changes. Chad Cruder will come in and catch. Paul LaDuca will move from behind the plate. Sons the equipment. He goes to first base. Eric Karras goes out. And the aforementioned Omar Dahl is in the game. 13 and 7 last season. You see his ERA, 32 starts. He'd prefer to start. But right now, he's going to be coming out of the pen for Jim Tracy. Well, he's been a guy that's been able to rotate the ball and change it, move it away from the hitters. He's been very effective. The changeup. And his delivery looks like he's trying to throw it about 150 miles an hour and really can't do it. But has great control. 80 to 86 mile an hour fastball, deceptive delivery. Fastball 83 miles an hour. Well, he got that delivery, changed it. He had a conversation many years ago with Luis Tiant. And of course, Luis Tiant was a righty, but he'll turn his back to the home plate and he'll pop his head up in the air and hide the baseball well. Especially, there it is, against a left-handed hitter. And it's hard to pick it up. So what all those guys do, Tiant included, is even though they make that big turn, they still get the body into that throwing position where the arm catches up and the balance point right there before the release to the plate. But it's so deceptive to a hitter to pick the baseball up and then try to attack it. You just don't hit it with a lot of authority, even though Dahl struggled a couple of years ago at 4-19 and 19 with Philadelphia. Hollinsworth lays off three and one. Well, you know what I've always said? Remember Brian Kingman lost uh, over 20 games? With Oakland? Year? Yeah, with Oakland. You have to be pretty good to lose 20 also. You got to be going out there a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's the big part about it. So Dahl begins by walking Todd Hollinsworth. Yeah, we talked about the delivery, but watch the shoulders. Very nice job of staying level. And hold her up right there. The shoulders very square to the plate. The leg kick, and then the drive in. It squares up pretty good at, into the plate. Does a nice job getting in a fielding position. He's got to get over the fact that he's not in a rotation. He is in the bullpen. And just wait for one somebody out of that rotation to fail, and he'll get his opportunity. But if he goes down and pouts in the bullpen, doesn't take advantage of these situations and throw strikes, and he's not going to get a chance in the rotation. The lefties down in their bullpen, Mulhall and Orozco and Dahl. Orozco, of course, what is he, 45 now, Drew? Orozco actually... Did he lose a year? No, Orozco actually came up with Pie Trainer. <laughs> All right, Orozco's got to be. Oh, he's, 40, he's 44. 44 years old. Yeah, there's, there's Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, been a long time pitcher with the Mets. Came up in the late 70s. On that uh, World Championship team in 1986 with the Mets. He arrived wearing bell bottoms, and now he's going to go out <laughs> in this day and age with the 45 inch waist. And nice play at third by Adrian Beltre to record the first out. Hollinsworth moves up. Rockies have had only four base runners, three by way of walk, and Todd Zeal single, the only hit the Rockies have. Ben Petrick. Coming up. Ben is 0 for 2, a strikeout, and a ground out to short. Uh, if you're wondering about the booze, we had a fan that felt like he was in slow pitch softball. Won't be the extra outfielder. Security thought otherwise. Yeah, secu sec yeah, security uh, did think otherwise. 1979 when Jesse Orozco, by the way, broke in. 
Jimmy Carter was in the White House. Up the middle. And as Turek cuts it off and throws out Petrick, Hollinsworth moves along to third. Well, as Turek has been as what everybody said he was. Got it smooth. Get, yeah, very smooth out at shortstop. Collects himself, strong arm, soft hands. There's a 22-year-old, and Terry Shumpert will get his second plate appearance. He was Andy Ashby's fifth and final strikeout victim in the sixth. By the way, the book on Andy Ashby, seven innings, he gave up one hit, he walked two and struck out five. And Shump pops it up. Paul LaDuca will tuck it away. Solid inning for Omar Dahl. We're in the middle of the eighth. Now, Mark Little is now in right field for Larry Walker. You like Little's speed. You like his arm. And the question mark, obviously, is can he stay healthy? He's not been able to do that last year in a Rockies uniform, but what a major asset to this ball club he would be if he stays healthy. I'll play all three outfield positions, possesses, possesses a very strong arm it's and one, great speed. It's one of the areas that Buddy Bell talked about, and it didn't get as much attention in the newspapers last year. When Mark Little got hurt, obviously Todd Hollinsworth got a great deal of attention because he was hitting 368. He said, but make no mistake, without Little, he had far fewer options defensively and far fewer options in terms of a guy with a bat who could run a little bit. And so Mark Little's injury also factored into the midseason swoon. No question. And I think that's one thing that, that you look at at Little, pinch run him in the seventh inning, maybe when you need a stolen base or a guy to score from first, the ball got in the gap at Coors Field, a guy that could go in, you could put him in center field, you move him over to left field. He was swinging the bat extremely well. Another, went, good, another good clubhouse guy. Oh, he's a lot of fun but, to be around. But see, now it's late in the game, and he didn't have the cup of coffee before he came in. That's a major league yawn right there. That is called the 930 in L.A. yawn on game four of the season. Chad Kruder smokes one at Little, and uh, Little <laughs> is awake and tucks it away. Mark, we had the camera on you, and the eye in the sky doesn't lie. We had to, we had to take you to the end of that yawn. Good play by Little as it was hit right at him. Center field number 30, Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts, the center fielder. He's had a nice ball game. One for two. He's been on base three times. The two other times by way of walk. He played in Japan. He actually was born in Japan. There's three players on this Dodger roster. They always have an international flavor here in Los Angeles. And he's one of three born in Japan. I think it, who we'll see tomorrow, and of course, Hideo Nomo, who went in the Dodger series. Well, I think you're seeing more and more with the Japanese professional league starting to be a little less lenient as far as allowing players to become free agents, come to the United States, put up the bidding war for these guys, let them go on the open market. They realize they can take that money and benefit from it and perform very well. But there's guys leaving here that we're saying very good, we call them 4A players in baseball, not good enough to get to the big leagues. Dominate at the AAA level that go over to Japan and dominate. Tuffy Rhodes last year hit 55 home runs. That's about five points short of winning the Triple Crown in Japan. He's back for his eighth year. John Wasden, former Rocky reliever starter, is starting his first year. Yeah, I saw that. So Wasden went uh -huh. over. So Dave Roberts is retired, and here is Cesar's Turris. His Turris in the ball games two for four. Double and an RBI in the third, singled in the fourth. Well, it's the Rockies' 10th anniversary season. Come kick, kick off the celebration on opening day Monday, April the 8th at 105. When the Rockies go up against the Houston Astros, come to the ballpark early and enjoy the 2002 opening day celebration. Get your tickets now, Coors Field Ticket Office, the Rockies' dugout and King Super Stores, or just call 1-800-388-ROCK. 
This is hit towards the gap in left center field. It's going to touch down. It's going to go all the way to the wall as Turris is thinking three bags. Hollinsworth's throw, the relay, and he's going to dive in with a triple. Uh, credit the young player out of the box. He dug out pretty quick. And Turris realizing that ball hit out into the gap. Hollinsworth and Pierre had to wait on the baseball to come off of the wall, and they did. Too late. This kid can fly. Well, last year, he hit over 300 in September. He was up and down between the minor leagues and Toronto last year. And his Turris smokes around second in the head first dive for three. Uh, you hear a lot of people talk about angles running the bases. Nice job that time by his Turris to run the bases. His tourist did a nice job cutting the angle at second bait base and cutting down his distance going into third base. Made the play very difficult for the Rockies. Paul LaDuca for the fifth time tonight. Now a first baseman. Caught the first seven innings. And Rick White's offering is hit foul into the second deck. Duca chops it at third. And nice job by Butler getting it across the diamond. We'll go to the top of the ninth inning. Nine to nothing to score all Los Angeles. And by Aflac. Without it, no insurance is complete. Well, the Dodgers tonight at Dodger Stadium have had a near complete game. Juan Pierre will lead off in the top of the ninth inning. They have relinquished just one hit. Andy Ashby the first seven. Omar Dahl came out in the eighth, and he will pitch the ninth. Pierre 0 for 2 in a walk, and he looks at strike one. Now let's not forget about the job that Rick White did out of the bullpen for the Rockies tonight. I realize a mop-up situation, but sometimes when things are bad, they can get really bad. Well, he didn't allow it to happen. It was a good strong outing yeah. by Rick White. Three innings, two hits, no runs, no walks, and no strikeouts. Bill Welke at third, the third base umpire, indicating that Pierre went around, so he's in a hole, nothing in two. Now this is if there's one thing that hurts Dahl is the fact that that guy should have brought a glove. That guy tried that to catch hit, it barehanded. Yeah. This is off camera. A guy tried to catch it barehanded. <laughs> And he caught it instead with his noggin. Right on top of the head. But with Dahl at 0-2, he doesn't have that put-away pitch. Go ahead and get the strikeout. I mean, he sometimes occasionally can throw the big bender, but more often than not, he can't do it. Beltre fumbles the baseball, and once you do that, you're going to have no shot at getting number nine. And that'll be an error on Adrian Beltre. The second of the year for Beltre at third base. Speed will do that. Anytime you a little boot on the ball, trying to hurry up, knowing that Pierre's at the plate. He had a nine to nothing ball game, though. This is where you got to catch the baseball. Agbayani will come on and pinch hit now for Rick White in the pitcher spot. Strike one to Benny Agbayani. Yeah. <laughs> Agbayani went deep in that St. Louis series. All the fight up. Just off the corner. One and one. Dahl really changes speeds. He'll so throw some pitches. Is uh, that? Hey, 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 don't get my he'll throw some pitches. That one at 79 miles an hour. He'll throw some pitches, George, beneath 70 miles an hour. Oh, absolutely. He'll throw some 60, 61 miles an hour on a curveball. Just try to get you out on the front foot. 
He'll turn it over. He'll cut it in on the hands of a right-hander, throw a big swooping curveball down and in. He has all the features. And from a lot of different arm angles. And Benny lost this to right field. Sean Green coming hard. We'll get there in plenty of time. And he'll record the first out in the top of the ninth. That's it, Mark Little will have his first plate appearance. Pops it up foul, and it's going to get into the seats. Mark has a perfect season going at the plate, George. One for one. Well, you know what? You got to start somewhere, yeah. right? <laughs> well, I really like him, only because he's a guy that, that works at staying in shape because he knows his opportunities with this outfield, the way it is with... Walker and Pierre, there's chances and opportunities once, maybe twice a week to play a full ball game. When you give those guys a day off, most of it comes as a pinch hitting type duty. So he works at it. Extra batting practice, a lot of time in the weight room, a lot of he, he's a sharp, conditioning. He's a sharp guy also. Do you know that he was playing down in winter ball in Venezuela? He learned the Venezuelan national anthem so well that he sung it before a game. I did not know that. I did not know that, see? No. Stick with me. I'm trying to think of the song that he sang on the plane one night that was pretty He's got funny. a great voice. Yes, he does. He's I mean, legitimately, good. he has a great mm -hmm. voice. The Dodgers lead it 9-0. We're in the top of the ninth. Two more from L.A. before the Rockies open a 10-game homestand, the home opener against the Astros. On Monday, and Dahl took a lot off there, and he fans Mark Little. So his average will plummet 500 points. Norton will also swing it for the first time tonight. He's in the game for Todd Helton. Helton went 0 for 2 in a walk. A lot of interest in Norton throughout baseball. All right, well, the switch hitter can play third, first, and the outfield. That's why Buddy Bell values him so much. Norton, 13 home runs last year, all from the left side. And he hits this one hard, but it is gloved by his terse, and that is that. A shutout for the Dodgers as they earn their first victory of the season, 9-0. One-hit baseball. Andy Ashby for seven. That man, Omar Dahl, for two. Sean Green, one of the hitting stars. We're back in a moment. 9-0, the Dodgers over the Rockies.